Hey, Zeus. What? Let's talk about grab them in the brisket, guys. Oh, that awesome podcast we were on. Yeah, that's a pretty good one, dude. They're so funny. What do you want to say about it? I just think they're hilarious, and they do an amazing job of talking about barbecue-related things. They have amazing guests. And what do you want to say about them? Go check them out wherever <laughs> you listen to your favorite podcast. Hey guys, this is James from Grabbing the Brisket. Uh, it's a new look for us, kind of a new digs uh, going on. Uh, I know we had a little bit of a technical difficulties going on a little bit, but hey, we're uh, pretty um, uh, crappy we people. So we, we're, we're, yeah, exactly. So we were able to uh, work it out. We're in two different locations. Uh, so we're at the old Grabbing the Brisket podcast studios and uh, Jan and uh, John are at the new ones. There it is. Yeah, it looks yeah. like somebody's and i'm just kidding i'm not gonna say anything uh yeah we're we're actually at matt's place um and matt's not even here matt's not here it's kind of weird with matt like being in somebody's home and they're not home you know what i mean yeah. i do it all the time to you guys don't worry about <laughs> He's like, Come sit <laughs> um, so we have a super uh fun episode planned for you guys we have qu we have grant with qu coming up in just a probably about five minutes or so uh won the American Royale, the 2022 American Royal barbecue competition. And he won both the open and the invitational, which I believe is the first time it's ever been done. And it is such an awesome achievement for somebody to, to, to have in the barbecue community. So we're, we're super stoked and happy to have him on the podcast and we'll have him up in a couple of minutes. But as always, you know, we, we always kind of run down and shoot the shit and talk about our days and talk about what's happening. Obviously you guys are at uh, Matt's house. Matt is uh, doing a 5k run. So how's it going? House sitting over there. Uh, it, he has a great dog. His dog is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Matt, Matt has trained his dog to open the back door and take himself to the uh, bathroom. It's the weirdest thing to watch a dog go and open a door. And not only if you close the door behind him, he will open the door and come inside the house as well. Yeah. Wow. He's smarter than my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, let me ask you this. So I saw earlier today, I was reading an article. So New Zealand, apparently, I guess they're trying to be up on their climate um, change policies where we're, they're trying to save the environment. They have now instituted or they're fixing to institute a tax on cow farts uh, because apparently cow farts are hurting the environment and that's how we can probably combat this whole global um, destruction that we're, no, we're heading through. Pandemic, James. How, how do you monitor the wrong thing to say, man? I was like, yeah. oh, don't say that word. Uh, okay. How do you monitor cow farts? Do you like, stick a meter up everyone's ass? Or? They're going to tax all the, they're going to tax all the damn farmers. That's it. Well, some cows fart more than others. Well, you're gonna see yeah, like carbon credits. Uh, listen, it's just just it's just, just big business, man. Big industry, big business. Uh, you're gonna see land bought up all across this world. Carbon credits are gonna thing. Uh, you're gonna sell your carbon credits back to other people that need them, right? And you're gonna sell them for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, that this cannot is, help. This the, is just a ploy. Can't just, help the price versus. This, this is how you yeah, right. This is how you raise prices. Um, you got to have something, James. So, dang. Okay. Can, can you harness yeah. those cow farts for natural gas? Hey, whatever. Maybe. Maybe. I think so. Can you imagine that? A little tank tied to the back of some cow just collecting gas, baby. <laughs> a little balloon. When the balloon yep. fills up, you tie it off. That's right. <laughs> what does your car farts? run on? Cow farts. Methane? Methane? Oh. I guess it rise. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, hey, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, get, let's get Grant in here. Let's, not, yeah. let's, let's go on. Let's, let's, let's get Grant in. No more okay. cow farts. Yeah, perfect. What's up, guys? Hey. What's up, brother? 
We've been What's teasing up, you for a couple of weeks now. Glad to have you in, Grant. Yeah, awesome for having me. Cow farts. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't expecting to hear that, were you? How do you follow cow farts up? <laughs> what have I done here? You know? Uh, it's awesome. So Ooh. obviously, um, you're coming off a, 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 a just a unprecedented win at the American Royal here at 2022. Uh, describe a little bit of how that is feeling uh, towards you and uh, what led up to that whole whole deal. It's been nuts. Obviously, you just that just that double header and winning back to back. It's just it's not supposed to happen. Um, looking back on it, I probably just not have turned on my phone or looked at my phone for you know 24 hours because that's when it just it was very overwhelming with everybody, the responses and everything else. It was cool. It was great. Um, I didn't like sit back and just kind of relax and just kind of take it all in until that the next weekend or actually pretty much this past weekend we did a local competition, which was awesome. Um, even though I was there and I pretty much got my balls busted the whole time. Like it's, <laughs> it did not, I'm serious. Brandon from blue Island, he parked right next to me and it just did not stop the whole time. So, um, but no, it was, it was an awesome experience. Um, obviously one of the best experiences I've ever had in barbecue and, um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I'm so so. You're you're an avid cook. You're you're a competitor. Were were there competitions leading up to to this event that you were like, I feel really strong about the product you're putting out right now. You know, was there anything like that, or did you really kind of go into this thing? Look, like it's anybody's. Ch you know, I, I know I know the mind of a comp of a competitor, but yeah, can you take us through that a little bit? No, we've had a stellar season. We've uh, so we were three wins already this season going into it. Um, so we were pretty much dialed on on our timeline, our seasonings, our product. Um, I'm fortunate enough I work in a kitchen, so I can kind of, you know, go back and forth with some handpicked stuff throughout the throughout the season. So that helps, I, I think. But going into the competition, no, I just that was the first time to Kansas City, um, the the Royal. Uh, I went with a good friend of mine. My wife couldn't go, so we drove out there, and we, you know, we were looking just to have a really good time, and party, and hang out with everybody, but. Our heads were down Saturday morning, and we had the cook that we've been cooking all year. Sunday morning, pretty much the same thing, except with just a little bit more of a hangover, headache, what have you. But, um, no, it's I, we, we felt good coming in, and, you know, you just got to cross your fingers and just hope for the best. Sure. Yeah, this is probably a dumb question, but I'm assuming nothing changed between Saturday and Sunday's cook. Like, you just – obviously, you killed Saturday. You're still the same thing Sunday. Totally. Same, 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 just kind of thing that I woke up a little bit later. Um, not by choice. Didn't set my alarm, but um, no, um, it was, uh, it was pretty much the same cook, smooth sailing. It's pretty awesome. What, uh, what, what, what kind of pit are you working with? I work with drums. Drums, right? Yep. They're, they're so easy uh, and, and portable, right? I mean, and, and once you dial them in and you get to find the right drum for you, but once, once you dial it in, you're, you're pretty much, You've got it down to how much charcoal or how much lump you're putting in there and, and lighting at a time and everything else, correct? That that that, that I, I live by that timeline. It's it's pretty much it's money when you you check pork once and it's done. You know what I mean? You check brisket maybe once, throw it back on the pit. But no, I you know, obviously you're gonna have thicker ribs, you're gonna have thicker monies or thicker briskets and but no, I, I stick by my timeline. I stick by lighting those pits at the same time and, and yeah, they're they're smooth sailing. It's it's awesome. All right. All right. Definitely. Yeah. Can we uh, talk a little bit about a timeline that you have? I mean, for maybe cooking brisket and cooking the 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 money mussels and chicken and whatever. How long is how long are is it taking you, you to cook a brisket oh, I'm, I'm, to do I'm, your I'm, pork I'm butts? Super, I'm super, super quick. Um yeah. I get I get brisket on and then wrapped within two hours. And then I'm checking that about two hours later and if things, you know, good to go, hopefully. And then, you know, money's um, on two hours, I wrap, and then about an hour and 20, an hour and 30, I'm checking those things and they're pretty much there. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hot and fast. Right, and, and you're not you're not cooking the point and the deckle together, right? You're, nope. the, you, nope. you've I, I, and I don't, even, and I don't even bring the points. I know that some people are just like, how don't you cook? burn ends but in illinois and wisconsin that's a we don't do that here they we have we get we get um abused <laughs> we get yelled at yeah they do they do not like that in wisconsin they do not like burn ends i don't know maybe they do they don't like mine so i stopped putting them in <laughs> okay nice. nice are you doing the chicken thighs or are you doing uh chicken legs thighs thighs all day yeah. okay 
So actually I lucked out. I've never had so many thighs split on me at the Royal because I, I, I have, I kind of separate them uh, when I, when I braise them out in two pans, put one on my chicken cooker and then put one on my pork cooker. Cause my pork's all, I just find it might just cook a little bit more even. And uh, yeah, the one cooker, I went to go check them and three or four of those skins. I've never really had it just blister on top. I'm like, that sucks. So um, then you really just, pretty much discarded those obviously and then just went with the the just i cooked 14 thighs so then on my chicken cooker opened those up and those were just perfect and luscious and plump so thank god i only got to taste one out of those but um but they they did they did good so thank god right. so. yep so I, I i i didn't get to see for all the categories there uh but the scoring for that what what put you you know, what, what was, do you have your scores or how, how you ranked in the, uh, uh, different categories? yeah, different categories. Not, nothing in front of me, but I just know that we didn't get it first day. We didn't get a chicken call. We didn't get a rib call, but then we hit two one eighties with pork and brisket. Okay. And then, um, uh, and then I was with, with my boys, the barbecue bus who had three awesome calls. So we had them locked in you know grand reserve and then it just it got down it was a seven i think a seven eleven day one and then day two um didn't get a chicken call chicken actually scored really well on um on on saturday better than sunday but then yeah day two was ribs we won ribs i think it was yeah it was a 180 and then we got a 12th brisket and then i think that put us at a 706 or something but um Chicken didn't do as well as day two, even though I like chicken better day two. And then pork was pretty high too. So it was just high scores all around. I mean, I just I just yeah. hit every, every freaking awesome table that there was in Kansas City that weekend. So shout out to whoever judged me that weekend on all eight tables. There it is. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so I know you uh I mean I, honestly, I, I try to do all the research on on the guests that we have on our on our on our show, uh, and I honestly I couldn't. I'm like I'm trying to. I'm telling John, I was like, I can't find anything about this guy. I don't even know anything about. I'm like I'm like googling like Facebook, Instagrams. So I was like I'm I'm coming up with like nothing. Uh, so, <laughs> I think I, think, I, I, uh, I think I've only had a parking ticket my whole life. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm low key so, as we come. Leading up to this, obviously you you've been successful. I mean, you won a grand champion to get into the the American Royal. Uh, but tell us a little bit about how you got into doing this competition barbecue. I know you said you uh, um, got a uh, culinary background. Uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about it. Totally, totally. So I moved out in Illinois in like 2006, uh, working for one of my best friend that you know I've known for 16 years. Uh, we were working country clubs out here, um, busier than hell no weekends off, that kind of thing. And then we hit a awesome plus job for Uline Shipping Supplies. Um, we took that job about eight years ago. Um, uh, corporate gig, Monday through Friday, sets up perfect for the weekends. Was doing mm -hmm. absolutely nothing except just, you know, cooking for friends and family on the weekend anyway. So uh, there was local comp. We hit it up and 17 was our first one. And then, so I think we got a chicken call that first competition, and then we won pork the second competition, and that was the hook. And then yeah. after after that, I think we went from four comps to 12, and then we did um, maybe 18, and then five, and I think this year we're at, at 10 right now. So that's it. Thousands of dollars later. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> more gray hair, more beer, Shit lots of more beer. Stuff. A lot of beer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we know. We we have the battle scars. I, I don't know anything about you guys. What are you guys cooking down there? Are you guys KCBS guys? So we're not. We're not. We're not KCBS. Historically, been the IBCA. Uh, we're in Texas. Uh, we're at, um, and then now you have the CBA, uh, which is really kind of bringing more of the Kansas City uh, style of barbecue or the KCBS style of, of barbecue uh, to us, right? Yeah. So. Uh, historically have not been big pork cookers, um, you know, unless it's pork ribs, right. For competition cooking, yes. but for us, it's, it's the half chicken. You typically turn in a half chicken. You're not going to, you're going to turn in different styles or a pulled chicken or anything else. Uh, and the brisket. Yeah. It's, it's, it's different for us. I mean, we have been, uh, again, I think, I think it's catching on more now the drums more now than they ever have been in the last probably five years. 
Sure. Um, the uh, the briskets on the drums, those those, and cooking just the flats. But historically, we've been cooking, you know, the entire briskets together and trying to serve or trying to, you know, to to have two different types of meat uh, or mussels uh, turned in. Right. That's kind of always the premise. A little bit of the point, a little bit of the flat uh, in every bite. That way, um, that's kind of how we've been historically been doing that. You know, so uh, we're we're definitely, I guess more trying to get to the comp side of the, you know, as, as far as the, uh, the pork butts, I, I'm not even sure. I mean, I've cooked pork butt a, a hundred times. I can't even tell you like to be able to dissect one the way you guys can right. you don't grow up with it more than we do. Yeah. We should just do an episode on though, where I should listen to you guys more often. Cause I got that Houston buy in. I'm just like, what the hell am I doing in Houston? How am I cooking this? Cause I look, there's not a ton of, uh, I mean, I guess I haven't really dove in deeply, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm shooting down there and I'm going to try to, I'm going to bring my cans down there and I'm going to try my best and figure this thing out. But um, yeah, it's uh it's interesting. Maybe I should, I should listen to you guys more often to give me some tips and some how to yep. do well, de- well, definitely reach out to us uh, when you when you head this way, because I know we'll, we'll, we'll be out there for sure. Um, I could tell you one tip, and uh, we talked about it before on the show. So they go around, and I'm not sure how Kansas City uh, does it or some of these other major cook-offs, but they go around and watch you cut your meat. Like, they, they, they have people right there with you. They check tags to make sure you're operating with the same brisket. We're going to go off brisket right now. They check the, the brisket to make sure you have the – all the numbers match up, and then they sit there and watch you. And they'll eagle eye you. Like, all, only thing you can do is cut it and put it in the box. There's no, no uh, there's no dressing it up. There's no hitting it with more sauce or hitting it with a little bit of a finishing dust. It's straight into the uh, the the box. So I did hear kind of a small little pro tip. I know where you're going with Get it. yourself like a sheet pan, and then when you pull that brisket out. Make sure you put all that au jus and stuff just in that sheet pan. If you want to dust it with a little, little rub or what have you, and then go start slicing off and let that brisket slice fall into that sheet pan to where it gets coated in that au jus, that, that juice, and then into the pan it goes. So, I mean, that's two cents here. And you can fabricate it down any way you want. You can split the, the muscle and do how many briskets? Yes. Do they, how many briskets do they give you? Uh, you provide your own briskets. Oh, that, you bring your own. is it just two briskets for turning though, or no? Correct. I think you, you're able to, you get two briskets that are tagged uh, and well, then you turn in one of them. You can but, bring, but, your own, you bring your own product down there. That's right. Correct. Okay, cool. See, I, I know absolutely nothing. I am very yeah. uneducated on this. So, so yeah, they, they changed not- up their format over the last couple of years because used to, you had, uh, the way they had the competition set up, you had brisket, rib and chicken competing against each other and so the grand overall grand champion was either a winner of the 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 rib chicken or brisket okay. and uh being in texas you would always you would assume that it might be just brisket but a lot of times that chicken will come out and it'll pop or the the ribs itself but they've changed it up to where they're like okay this is kind of not re- not really not fair because you would have like these large uh teams out there that have like five six spots mm-hmm and they would all turn in uh, multiple turn ins uh, that I, either they do all briskets or they do all they they kind of rotate. Right. And it, the smaller guys would kind of suffer a little bit. So they, they try to, to bring it back to where everybody kind of had an equal opportunity to win this thing. Hmm. Right. Right. But I, I will say it's uh, it is is very much like the Royal um, as far as the, the party happening. Uh Except for it's going to be on steroids. <laughs> it's going to be I've never experienced yeah, really it's every, it's night. every night. Yeah. So obviously I mean, you're going to be you know, it's straight business, and you're going to have your suitcase, and you're no partying whatsoever. But yeah. I will warn you, like Jan yeah. saying, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, it is on. It's on. Yeah. I, I, no, but I don't. I don't know if you really understand what I'm saying when I say it's on, and I just want to make sure you know this. Yeah. We're talking about you're you're sitting in a metropolitan area of six and a half, seven million people. Yeah. Those three or four days is like the holy grail of drinking. You're gonna have, <laughs> you're gonna have a million people yeah. Yeah. flood that gate. It's yeah. you're, it's gonna be crazy. The the, the tents, the boost, that the, it's such a wild event. 
to begin mm. with. Uh, so it's very easy to get caught up in that because you, you're you're in areas you're like, oh, I, I can go to this booth, I can go to this booth over here, and yeah. you know you're in a booth with three thousand people, and it's just three bands playing or something. It's just crazy in these booths. Yeah. And so, what they'll do is they they have a championship corner, and so they'll stack you guys along with all the other champions, the Jack. Uh, I think there's probably maybe San Antonio, um, obviously the American Royal, Memphis and May. All these guys are going to be stacked in the same corner along with their international teams uh, that they have. I think probably UK and 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 some of the the, the yeah, international yeah, teams. Yeah, everybody's the right there in a row, and then, of course, you know, cameras. Everybody's right there in your grill. Well, challenge accepted. Love yeah. it. <laughs> Let's go. We'll be there recording. So if you get a minute, find us and we'll uh, we'll get you on in person. Yeah, totally, absolutely. I've I've never really, I've thrown, flown through Texas, but never really hung out there. A good friend of mine, uh, Nick Fine, actually is just texting him. Um, he has a restaurant down there. Um, what's he got? He's got Wild Oats and Georgia James. He's a huge Houston guy. Huge, huge, huge Houston guy. So when I when I called him uh, Monday morning when I when I knew that I was getting in there, he could have been like, he's like, dude, it's on. So he's he's super super pumped. So shout out Nick Fine. He's an awesome dude. Great chef, and he loves Houston more than anything. Nice, love that. Nice. Yes. What's your initial? You say you flew through Houston. I mean uh, Texas. Are you road tripping or just flying in, flying oh, no, out? No, no. We, we got we got redirected on a crazy flight to Denver, Milwaukee to Denver with some tornadoes, and we ended up in Fort Worth overnight. And it was yeah, it was a shit show. It sucked, but um, I saw the Milwaukee to Denver. That that stadium is freaking massive. That's awesome. That AT and T thing. Oh, yeah. It was uh, it was um, it was the Rangers opening day, so they were pretty pumped. But um, no, it was it was yeah, it was quick. It was in and out. They fixed that construction in Fort Worth. That that was a that was a mess there. Uh, they're they're still trying to, to be honest with you. There's they're getting more construction going on, but it we I we love Fort Worth, so I do. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. I think Uline just opened one up there down there too in the past couple of years. So okay. uh, trying to get down there. We normally they send us to these uh, warehouses that they open up. We did one in Georgia, PA. We actually flew out to Seattle to do one. Every time they open these things up, we send they send us out there and we do these big barbecues for four or five hundred people as their as their opening kind of gig. So for okay. um, we didn't we didn't get the invite because I think it was like the, the whole COVID kind of thing. But hopefully we get back and up with with doing barbecue with all these warehouses opening up. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, so you, cooking competition is a lot different from cooking, whether you're doing catering. Uh, what kind of equipment are you using when you do for larger cooks? Do you have an offset smoker or do you have some type of or are you just rolling a bunch of drums? No, no, I, I actually I, I don't really do a whole lot of smoking for my for my job. It kind of sucks. We kind of we got a it, we got a little pellet cooker underneath our hood and then we kind of it's it's not great. Um, I wish we could <laughs> I wish we could make it better um, for little private events. Um, we do, we'll, we'll pull out the drums. Um, we do have a jam, but nothing, nothing as far as volume. We're not even close yeah. to volume. A lot of these, what I just talked about, we go to these places, we actually have to rent, rent, you know, some shitty Lang or some just, yeah, it's it, not saying all Langs are shitty. These rentals aren't, you know, they're not in the best shape when you get <laughs> them. No. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. So, so no, no, we, we don't, we don't do a whole lot of volume at work as far as barbecue goes, but um, I would love to start doing it for sure. Yeah. So I, I know you're probably getting like torn in uh, probably after the wind, you're getting torn in like, uh, like 500 million directions. What's uh, what's on the horizon for you um, coming up here in the next couple of months or anything planned? It's, it's actually been super, like I've done a couple podcasts, but other than that, it's just, it's, it's business as usual. I am getting just smoked at work. We are very, very busy. Uh, we run a pretty crazy operation. Um, if it's not PTO or personal time off or somebody calling in sick or somebody with a, you know, needs a, a new a knee replacement or whatnot, we seems like we're always short staffed. So my eye right now is on work because we are, I mean, that's my bread and butter. Um, yeah. For the future as barbecue goes, I'm hitting Houston. I'm hitting the Royal again, I'm going to do the Jack and then we're just going to keep that little pocket of, you know, of 10, 10 comps. I got, a, I got a little guy. He's like one and a half. My wife's super cool. She loves doing this stuff with us too, but 
um, I can't see myself just, you know, diving in and just going all over the, the country, you know, looking for more competitions. It's, it'd be awesome, but I, I just don't have the time to be honest. Yeah. With you. No, no. <laughs> I understand you 100%. It, unless it starts paying the bill big time, then you're like, oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. Right. Right. I think you need that whole social media kind of outlet, which I just, I haven't really dove into a whole lot. So, but, um, but no, my focus is at work. My focus is, is, is our employees and that company and barbecue is just, it's, it's not in the backseat. It wants to be sh- sitting shotgun, but right now it's just like, it's, we have a very exciting year. I was thinking about doing Memphis in May too, cause I've done it before. I thought I'd hit that whole, that, that four, you know, that, but uh, it might be a little too much of doing Memphis, Memphis in May too, but then we're hit, we're hitting those big three and then we're going to, we're going to stick to our, our, uh, our, 10 to 12 competitions. Yeah. On the myth of the May, do you have to cook a whole hog? Uh, yeah. So it breaks down. You could do whole hog, shoulder, or ribs. Okay. And you don't and those, need those, those all compete all against each other. What's that? So those all compete against each other. Almost kind of like what Houston is. Like uh, your whole hog champion and your, your, your ribs and, and your pork. From there, they determine who's going to be the overall grand champion. That's it. You, you have one winner for each category, and then you have an overall winner. So, oh, well. Yeah, it's a shit show down there, too. I'll see. <laughs> I've, I've done that. I can't wait to do Houston because you guys just no. talked it up. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up to do it. But, I, like, again, I got, I, got some, I got some homework to do, you know. I want to come down there and, and not shit the bed and, and not be <laughs> laughed at with my drums and my little trailer. So um, I'm hoping I can, I can figure out how to do this and, and, you know, make some Houston or some Texan judges happy so we'll see no, yeah, you're, you're not going to be alone uh Maybe with your not. uh drums i'll tell you 100 percent because uh yeah, i've been out there at row. houston and even the championship row oh, that's all i saw was just drums oh. so yeah you volunteer james Dude, I, I, vol- I volunteer for the houston livestock <laughs> here we radio, go the barbecue competition so you know a guy so, so let's go. james is actually out there and he volunteers for for that barbecue cook-off so he's out there part of the volunteer group uh, as a volunteer, but what he's not, yeah, as a volunteer, he <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> all the it's, volunteering he's doing. It's hard work, guys. I'm, I'm what saying. He's not telling you, he's he's not not what, he's, what he's not telling you, he spends a week with barbecue, and then he gets to go to every show after that for the entire lineup. So why not? Why not? Why not? Drinks the whole time, and he drinks it, the whole time. Oh, well. I'll tell you right now, it, it's a science on how to keep beer cold. So. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I sacrifice my time to provide cold beer to all the people out there. They don't even know. I mean, there probably should be like a statue or some type of um, maybe plaque or something. Maybe, maybe a pin or something. I don't know. But right, right. Goals. What you're thinking. Something to shoot for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Grant, we appreciate your time tonight, brother. Um, we want you to, I guess, wish you many luck. Hopefully – uh, you give us a shout when you get down here. Love to hang out with you. Oh, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and if you need if you need any help on growing your social media, uh, reach out to us. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, give you a give you a handout. Well, I appreciate awesome. it. That's awesome. Hey, hey, good luck tonight, guys. Is there a score right now? Do you have one? Uh, I'm not saying it yet. Yeah, it was tied last time we looked. So, hmm. still tied. Still tied. Right on. Well, I will stay up way too late and watch that game then. Yeah, there it is. Hey, hey awesome! Thanks for having on, on, guys. This is this is great. We, we definitely appreciate it, Grant. We wish you the best. Thanks, and congratulations on the win. Yeah, congrats. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Right. Dude, Boom. I that's unbelievable, man. I and like, yeah. I, hopefully, people can really just think about what this really means. Is is he went through a competition and competed in all categories on Friday and won that category, or Saturday? I'm sorry, Saturday. And then he, he turned around the very following day and entered a category, every category again, against every single body that he already uh, went against, and then right. the entire other group of people, right? So um, total 500-plus teams uh, the last yeah. day. The first day was 270 teams. Uh, so it's two different competitions back-to-back, and he won them both. It's amazing. And, and how many feelings does that hurt that, like, he still has his 9-to-5? Like yeah. – no, he. This is not his professional gig. No, no, one hundred percent. And and that's I, I love that about that. And, and you know, here's and I think about this. Had he had like you know this crazy huge social media following already, or been pushing a brand or anything else, 
this is the jackpot of jackpots. You know what I mean? Doing doing what he did. Like this would have catapulted a sauce, a seasoning, or anything else. Uh, hopefully he's gonna start working on a seasoning because I think I think uh, I think he's got something to say about it, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I guess we're not doing the beer review um, today, so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We could. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you have it over there. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll get the beer set up, but while we're doing that, I'm going to do some uh, hot off the grill barbecue news. Love it. Brought to you by the Barbecue News Magazine, MBBQA. And I just got one quick thing here. Uh, the Jack Daniels just happened. I don't know if you guys heard about that. It's a, it's a barbecue competition. They do. Uh, it's the Jack. Yeah. They call it the Jack. They do call it that. And uh, the winner was uh, Heavy Smoke Barbecue, which I know I've heard the name. I can't think Killed of who the head cook is. But uh, they were grand champions out there. And uh, congratulations. They kicked the mess. That's all I got. Yeah. 20, 25 grand. Yeah. When you get Jack is twenty five thousand. Yeah. Twenty five grand. What do you get at the Royal? Not twenty five grand. You gotta ask Grant. They paid out the most is what they were saying. Like they, they pay out the most overall. Oh, okay. Because but first place at the Jack is twenty five grand, and they get a chip bottle of Jack Daniels. I think a lot of people get a bottle of Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, out, man. If I do, if I would have won that twenty five grand, it's definitely that bottle's coming open and. You I'll might yeah. We're passing that around. around. It? Yes. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> We're passing that around till it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. On stage. We're getting tattoos. So, yeah, I don't know if you saw our I'm little makeshift. Uh, hey, Cotton Gin Smokers. Guys, well, hey, go check them out. Cotton Gin Smokers. Yeah. I, we're actually talking with Matt there. So, uh, I like that. What is that, James? Show me what you got there. Uh, it's oh. our uh, ice maker slash cooler. Oh yeah. Did Matt get these glasses from his mom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get it out of a happy mail. <laughs> these are family heirlooms that John just pulled out. Nice. These came from his grandma. Yeah. Hey, don't use those glasses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 don't use those, man. Hey. All right, so let's slide into that grab them in the brisket. Be you. Oh, we have. Hey, cheers! Uh, cheers to Matt and his uh, 1978 glasses that we just got. Matthew, cheers, Matt. That's authentic. There might be some like so crazy <laughs> uranium glass filled uh, product here that was developed in the 60s. Definitely is. Put a black light on it. If it glows, you know it is. That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this it's is awesome. a shiner. This is the Shiner Oktoberfest. This is their Marzen style beer. Marzen? Marzen. Marzen. I don't know. Anyway, it sounds right. This is an Oktoberfest. Hmm. It's a solid beer. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because it's from Shiner. And I'm not going to say because I'm from Texas, I'm going to automatically make this like the best beer ever. Uh, it's good. I like it. I like the color. Yeah, it's got a great color in this, right? <clears throat> Like I'm having not my, it's, not, it's not my favorite Oktoberfest beer. I'll put it that way. It's pretty far up there for me. Uh, it's really good. This is like my fifth one, but I like it. <clears throat> and they do come in little small little uh, pony kicks. Yeah, that's really the cool part too. So sure. yeah, you guys didn't see that little video we put out there. Go check that out on all the social medias. Uh, or you can find it through our website, grabthebrisket.com. Yeah, I got a little plug right there, John. Uh <laughs> Alex, I mean, since you're at your quarterly meeting right now, do you right. want to go ahead and give us a score on this? Making or? faces over there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I feel like the way you are talking, you'll like it more than I do. Well, you'll never know until you give us a score. Well, it ain't a truly. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hit him with the – It's a – hang on, one more sip. Yeah, the only 6'5 guy I know that – never mind. It's not bad. It's about a six two. Six two. You're saying it's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. Bad. It has a little back end of like metallic-y taste to me. Hmm. You think it's from the keg? It might be. Is that what it's from? It's from yeah. a keg. Yeah. A little pony keg thing. It's a little metallic-y. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'll give it a six too. I I drink another one. Perfect. So we got to finish that thing. Yeah. Tonight. Uh, we're doing one. Keg right. keg stands. <laughs> I'm going to keg stands. stands. Let's do it. <laughs> How does that we're work? We're holding over our heads. It's like Damn, we did keg stands at John's birthday party. Mm, we did do keg stands. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to six for my score. I think this is a really good beer. I think. Um, I think it, there's, you're right. There is a metallic taste. That's why it's not higher for me. It's, just, it's very drinkable, right? I can drink the beer really good or fast um, or all day. But I think there's some, there's also something else there. There's, there's this bitterness that just hasn't – it's almost like it needs to be a little bit more, uh, in my opinion, maybe more – Too many IBUs for you? Maybe. Maybe, 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 it's, maybe it's just a little too bitter. Maybe it needs to be a little more Shiner Bach. For me. Yeah, I need more of the Bach. No beer does. Yeah. It's the yeah. Bach. Right, right. But I need a little Bach to this. That, okay. that was what I was going to say. I need a little. You said Shiner, and that just makes me think of Shiner Bach, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with a solid uh, 6.5. So it's good. Wow. Drinkable. It's not my favorite. That wasn't a rookie score, James. Yeah. Way to go, brother. First time in I don't know how long. <clears throat> Maybe it's because I'm here. Hey, we grew up. Uh, Sometimes we grow up, so. <laughs> like a round of applause button. That's that's what I need. Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll get that in there. I got a scream in there. Don't worry. We'll, somebody's getting a scream tonight. That's fine. Uh, yeah, for me, I I really like this beer. I don't know if it's just because I've already drank a bunch of them, but uh, for happens. me, this, this is a fall beer. This tastes like an Oktoberfest beer. Like, I probably don't want this in the summer or even the spring, but right now, this is really good. I'm going uh, 8.7. Hmm. I like, I like it's weird that I I feel like you thought of 8.7 at the very last moment instead of thinking of your 8.7 earlier. You know what I mean? I knew I was somewhere between like 8.4 and like 9.3, but I didn't want to go Ooh. into the – I wasn't ready for that, so I, okay. I, I went 8.7. I'm sorry I have to explain this, honestly. No, no. I, well, so what gave away was your eyes. You looked up for the answer. You're like, uh, uh, I was versus, asking God. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. It's like, what? Or are you communicating with the guy? Yeah. There it is. Daily. Yeah. Well, I guess that wraps up the grab and the brisket. Be ready to do. Thank you. Finish it. All right. Thank you. Finish it. Yeah. Fresh off the uh, the presses here, guys. I, I got a couple of topics or I got a couple of questions to ask you. Hopefully, we don't go too long because obviously, you don't, we don't want to create like a two hour podcast. Uh, but I'll go ahead and tell you right now. Well, maybe I'll preface this. Okay, so a gas station in 2023 has come out and said they will start selling weed in their gas stations. What? I'll, I'll circle K. Circle K in Florida in 2023 have already come out said they will start selling weed at their gas stations. It's going to be the first. Makes sense. Yeah. Huh? Circle K, gas Florida. station, Florida. Yeah. 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 Weed. Yeah. It, well, it's the first legal. Like, uh, I, I know weed's probably Florida, been sold at gas legal. stations. Like, Is it legal in Florida? Since 20, 30, 40 years. <laughs> Do what? Is it legal in Florida? Uh, apparently. Hmm. Well, well, why wouldn't you then at a gas station? I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask you. Circle K, Circle K, K do you think distributor in the Florida? Do you think would Circle I, K I, scream I, I, to you? Do what? Circle K, do they scream to you? Like they're going to be the first ones to bring weed, or yes. would you have thought a different gas station? No, it's, the, no it's either them or Seven Eleven. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody with all the munchies, right? Bucky's. Can you imagine what Bucky's oh, going to do with it? Lord. <laughs> If yeah, Bucky but started to, they yeah. probably rule yeah, the world. They're cultivating it and then they're chopping yeah. it. I don't know how you make they're, it. They're they're if, Bucky, through the roof. Right. if Bucky starts selling weed, they'll pass up like Amazon on the most profitable it, company it, in the world. Think, you not think Amazon's going to have this thing cornered by one day? They're, they're going to have fields of this shit. Just come on. They have drones dropping this shit in the backyard lit for you. Who knows, man? Yeah. Until Elon Musk starts growing that shit, like you get space weed, or you're gonna have like <laughs> THC beaver nuggets. I think, 
I'm not going to lie to you. I think we're going a little too far with this. I don't think Circle K should be able to sell anything uh, in their gas stations like that. I think that should be controlled uh, dispensaries. I mean, it's like basically every gas station now is going to be like an armed guard and like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't see that happening. Like, well, it, it probably be, it will be from like dispensaries. Like, eventually, of the, eventually it'll be like packs of cigarettes. Right. You buy a pack of joints that's already pre rolled, filtered, non filtered. That's the way it's going to go eventually. I think you're right. Oh, so like Marlboro. Yeah. Oh. Marlboro Green. Marlboro Marlboro Green cigarettes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's the I way it's going to go. You're going to gas station and be like, let me. You're calling this I need, I need 20 on pump yeah, one. This yeah, uh, six pack of Budweiser's and a pack of Marlboro Greens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting. That's the future. Yeah. 100 percent it is. Hmm. Hey, whatever, man. Okay. Right, what, so uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I, John, uh, you may want to close your ears or you may want to like maybe uh, turn away a little bit. So uh, they've discovered a a tree frog in Chernobyl that has mutated <clears throat> and has turned itself pitch black and is now uh, well, well, lack of the better term, uh, the radiation does not affect it anymore. Mm. It's it, it's you can't even kill this thing with a nuke. You know what I mean? Like the radiation is just like, hey, I'm good with this guy. I'm going pitch black, and he he is so he's like the absent of light, right? right. He's so black. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Like, he, what what happened? Like, what what does that do? I, they just discovered the species that they they are no longer affected by the the radiation that's there in that area. They're thriving, but you yeah. can still stomp on him and kill him, though, right? <laughs> yeah. right? Is that a thing? Like that's a swamp? Right. He's like, he's like a swamp? He's like he's super black, and you wouldn't see him at night. You know how much money I would spend to have one of those brought here the to 80s, put in John's bedroom? The eighties did like eighteen movies that's over cool. shit like this happening, like Swamp <laughs> Thing, uh, Toxic <laughs> Avenger. Falling in a vat of toxic waste, right? Uh, and then now you've got Chernobyl frogs. Yes, this is great. This can this 100%. is a new movie. One hundred percent. Hey, uh, another movie coming to your uh, um, studio Healer. very soon that may actually be real. So the Boston University they've been experimenting with the coronavirus, and so they have taken the Omicron version. In the original strain, basically, they've ripped the spikes off the original one, and they've taken Omicron and put the spikes on top of that, and they gave it to a bunch of rats. 80% kill rate. Yeah, what, let's, what? let's do that. Let's fuck rats. with that. 80% oh, kill rates with these mice that they're giving it to them. One, I'm like, what? What are you doing? Why? Why are you even creating this? Let's right. go ahead and just torch that lab. How would you uh, do that? Yeah, that's like the start there. of a really bad movie. Uh, James, I don't. You're such. I don't know how this is going right now. This is not good. Yeah, uh, it's in a it's in a level four contained facility. No, we need to burn that down. Locking doors right now, bro. <laughs> Between your frog story and the, you know, the chance of this super. Virus now. It's going to mate with the black frog, and then we're going to have the black death again. So there it is. I don't know why we got off on this like somber, like well, you, 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 hey, John, remember? <laughs> yeah. I, horrible subject. My bad. My bad, guys. It's so, really depressing. It is. Yeah. Um, Astro score, uh, where are we at with that? It is still 1 uh, 1. One one, okay. Worth the Yankees. One. Um, right, Pete, can I talk a little bit about the uh, pork butt that I cooked this weekend? And, and obviously, we had Grant on with QU. He probably cooks a mean pork, and I guess they probably don't even cook pork. They did cook the whole pork butt. They they separate the the money muscles and just cook a bunch of money muscles 
and then no, no, you're going to cook. You're going to cook your pork butt, right? And then remove your money muscles from the pork butt as you after you cut it up. I think they separate the money muscle. We only talked about brisket on separate. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. They they do. They they separate the the money muscle and cook it separately. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I I made a pork butt this weekend. It, it's probably been years since I've made a pork butt. I don't know why I, I kind of sleep on that a little bit. It's king of uh, brisket is king here in Texas. So that's something that I always kind of focused on and we do pork ribs. But so I, I, I knocked out a pork butt this last weekend watching football. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, that thing turned out phenomenal. Like I, I'm not even lying. Like um, yeah, it was really good. No call, no show. Hey, it was so good. Recipe it's so good. Uh, also, James, because I we got the recipe for that, and that's going to be up, up on our uh, webpage uh, at grabtherbiscuit dot com, uh, and that's sure. going to be James's Sunday uh, pork butt. So yeah, Sunday fun day pork butt. We'll we'll put it out there. Uh, but I can tell you right now, uh, I used the Mark Lambert pork injection. Uh, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I used the uh, pit maker. Uh, pork rub, and I also used I think this Oki Smokies uh, Championship pork chicken uh, rib rub. Yep, I, that's the only thing I did. Uh, came out awesome. And, but side story: w what led me up to this is my daughter. She was like uh, Sunday night. Hey, I uh, actually Sunday night we watched the Cowboys, and Monday evening when we did dinner, I was like, okay, we have this pork butt. Busted it out. She's like, I fucking love this. She didn't say she didn't say the F word. <laughs> wow. She didn't say the F word. She was like, no, Emma wouldn't say that. She's like, holy crap, this is really good. She's like, this tastes like brisket, but softer. Ooh. Oh, hey. Like, Ooh. Huh. I was hmm. like, interesting. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, they gonna dig on brisket? Grain of salt. I was like, thank you. I hey, appreciate mm. it. She she scarfed it up. The next morning, she's like, uh, hey, mom, I want some of that brisket. To, I want some of that uh, pork to take to school for my lunch. <laughs> I'm Just like, make all the kids jealous. Wow. All right. <laughs> she had it two days in a row at school. I'm like, this is my number one biggest fan right here. <laughs> but on, honestly, I, I was sitting there thinking, is like, how, how is this shit going at school? Like, is, is Emma just trolling me? Is she like going there and selling yeah. this pork? Yeah. Right. Or, or yeah. my thing is like, do kids still trade lunch? Yeah, is she like going back to... in the day? Like it's like, hey, I'll give you two ounces of this, but I'm gonna need your whole snack pack over there. Hmm. I, I assume that still goes on. No. It's like hey, um, it's like hey, uh, so okay, up for bids, guys. Uh, we're we're starting the auction. We got this. Uh, a uh, nice juicy smoked pork butt uh, done by a uh, award winning pit master slash barbecue radio host. Knock uh, yourself up. Uh, who's oh, putting up their first car? Right. Also, oh, he's a volunteer at the Houston Rodeo. So, right. And then all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, little Ricky's like, he he pops up and he's like, hey, my dad co cooks a really good steak. And, and Emma's like, dude, hey, nobody gives a shit about your dad and his shitty ass steak. <laughs> It's like he probably over he probably cooks all the mild loaves out of this day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> cooks he it marinates it in A1. Right. He definitely uses ketchup on his steak. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, little Ricky. So, it, it was kind of a uh, feather in my cap. Uh she loved it. I was like, okay, great. Uh that's definitely coming back on the menu uh for the weekends that we have that throughout the week. Uh so hey, look. Forward to uh, posting that recipe for you guys, so y'all guys keep an eye out for it. Okay, we'll get that up uh, hopefully before this episode drops. You guys can go go look at it. Grabthebrisket.com. Nice. Ah, you're just flying solo there. I guess. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. All right. Well, honestly, uh, before we go, can I say, hey guys, it's been an awesome episode. We appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. Um, definitely, if you get a chance, slide over to our website. Uh, we have a lot of information where you can get a hold of us, whether it's social media or whether it's just um, 
um, sendeth an email and saying, hey, what's up? Uh, go check it out. Uh, also, we, we have a number out there for you guys. If you want to call us, if you want to leave us a voicemail, if you want to uh, be able to make it up on the podcast, leave us uh, your uh, barbecue fail, your barbecue win, a story. We'd love to put it on the show. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Hey, phone number 434-829-2299. Hey, John, can you get a graphic? Just make that scroll across the screen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that all your? That's it. That's all you need. That's it. That, I mean, that's all I need. Uh, just giving thanks and praises to uh, all our uh, listeners. Mm, nice, nice. <laughs> <Thanks so. laughs> that was the wrong one. Yeah, we didn't get it. <laughs> we, yeah. Oh, oh. Sorry. John's gonna pull up some inappropriate pictures in a minute. Uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> oh, Huh? Is it gone? Yeah. There it is. There. It is. Oh, he did it. He did. Yeah. But there's, no, uh, there's, there's no hyphens in between. Yeah, it's it's really tiny. You oh, can see now it. you have a problem with it. Yeah. Hey, everybody, press the pause button. <laughs> All right. Good try. Yeah. Good try. As always, it's been fun doing the podcast. I and. I feel like I say this all the time, but hey, I enjoy talking barbecue with you guys. Peace. Cheers, guys. Smoke on. Right. I was going to do it. Do it. Smoke on. Nice. Hey. Dang it, Bobby. Just grab the brisket. We'd like to give a special thanks to Suckle Buster's Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, Bonner's Fiesta Spices, Cooley Nation Custom Koozies, Cambro Manufacturing, Yeti Coolers, The Smoke Sheep Barbecue Newsletter, and Dow Strong Knives. We definitely appreciate your support.